move little further coming back to the production function again. We will go back and forth rather than finish one and go to na another. I am describing it in this particular way, so that you can relate the these two representation. So, now we have we had drawn a graph, where we have one input and we have one output. Now, let us say what if, because I said that production function we will do, when we have only one output. I did not put any restriction on number of inputs. What will we do, when we have let us say two inputs and one output? We will have a three dimensional graph. Okay. We can have here input 1, input 2 and on the third axis we can have output. That is one way to do it. But this is quite if this three dimensional graph is little less tractable than a two dimensional graph. So, a better way to represent this production function is to use something called isoquant. And what do we mean by a by an isoquant? What is an isoquant? Isoquant is a curve having fixed output. Not bad. So, what we have is basically a set of input combination or vectors. Why I am saying vectors? Because vectors is well suited to represent the input combination that after transformation <laughs> give out the same amount of same amount of output. Let us say for example, say q naught for a particular label. Okay. Further, further the same combination further the same combination cannot be used cannot provide more than q naught output. That is very important, this is very important. For example, let us take, is it clear? Let us take this. Here we have one dimensional world, where we have one input and one output. So, two dimension, input is one dimensional, fine. Now, we have the example that we took root x. Can you tell me the isoquants here? Single point at any level let us say we talk about y is equal to 5. So, we draw a line y is equal to 5. So, it is only 25 units of x would give us 5 units of y. So, isoquant y is equal to 5 has only one point, has only one point we are talking about and that is x is equal to 25. So, similarly what did we do here? We tried to obtain basically isoquant is nothing, but a level curve of the production process. Isoquant, let me say an isoquant, isoquant is a level curve of the production function. And how do we obtain the level curve? We draw like here in this case, we draw y is equal to a. If we are interested in level curve a, then we draw y is equal to a. And here in this case, it is a line. And of course, it will intersect the curve. 
wherever it intersects the curve all those combination would be on the isoquant. So, it is in one dimensional, so we get only one point, but what we have typically here in the two dimensions, three dimension where input are on two dimension and output on the third dimension. What we do when we draw y is equal to a, what do we get? A plane, a plane and then we may get more than one point y is equal to a will be a plane here. Okay? So, what we this plane may intersect the production function at more than one point and all those points will be on isoquant y is equal to a. What it means that you take the combination of those inputs you will be able to produce a amount of output and you cannot produce more than a amount of output. Okay? Fine. So, for example, let us take two dimensional world that you have already looked at earlier. Let us say the bread, let us continue with the bread example, the production of sandwich. What we have here is y is minimum of x 2, x divided x 1 divided by 2 and x 2. x 1 is amount of bread and this is butter. How would the graph look like here? In this, try to draw a three dimensional. Here is a set of plane, it would not be a set of plane. Anyway, think about it, that is what I said. The easier way is to use the concept of isoquant to describe this production function. How can we describe it? We can take a particular value of y, starting with y is equal to let us say 1. So, to get 1 units of 1 unit of sandwich, how many units of bread <coughs> we need? 2 and what we need? 1 unit of butter that will give. So, let me say this is the line, here we have 2 and here we have 1, but also notice in this particular case, even we if we have 3 bread, 4 bread, 5 bread or just 1 unit of butter, we are still able to produce only 1 sandwich. So, all these lines here that represents that butter remains fixed at 1, but amount of bread keeps on increasing, does not matter we get the same amount of sandwich and similarly in the other direction also. So, this is the isoquant and similarly we can draw for y is equal to 2, y is equal to 3 and so on. If you remember, sorry, is it clear? These are the isoquant 1, 2, 3. We had drawn very similar curves when we talked about indifference curve, okay. in case of perfect complementarity between two goods. Can you say what is the big difference from there and here? Any difference that you can think of? Any difference that comes to your mind from the earlier case or it is exactly the same? Of course, this is we are talking, I am not talking about uh, the process, I am talking about mathematically what is the big difference. Of course, here we are talking about production and there we talked about consumption, of course that is a difference. But here the bigger difference is that 1, 2 and 3, these are cardinal in nature. And they were ordinal. And they were ordinal, they were the 1, 2, 3 there represented only the levels. Here, these are cardinal, 2 is twice as much as 1. So, if you think in this way, this topic is much easier than the consumer theory, is not it? That here everything is cardinal, you do not have to, you know, here that is what we deal with all the time, numbers and immediately it cardinality pops in, in our mind. So, uh, this is what we are more familiar with. Okay, and so, we will use the very similar concept, fine, is it clear? Okay. Let us look at one more production um, 
one more iso quant and this time for Cobb Douglas function. And how can we represent the Cobb Douglas function? Here be particular about it when we say Cobb Douglas function, we write here x1 a x2 b, where a and b are greater than 0 and typically I am not saying always that a plus b is equal to 1, but this is not true always that we will learn shortly. Okay. Here be careful, you cannot do the monotonic transformation. You can do if you are putting log on both side, then of course, log x 1 plus b log x 2. Remember earlier we did the monotonic transformation and we took this out, we said that level would be preserved. So, we do not need to put here log, but here we have to put log because the numbers have meaning. Okay. So, we cannot take blindly monotonic transformation on only one side, is it clear to you? And iso quant in the case of Cobb Douglas function would look like something like this downward sloping curves, fine. 